thank you very much. And may I thank the uh, organizers as well for this uh, wonderful meeting. So I'm going to be talking about work I've done with Patricio uh, Zuma, Kama, Kava, Vitalito, Dr. Sue, and Dr. Sue, and Here we are in an eight hour time zone meeting. Thank you. So, uh, my talk is somehow a continuation of uh, Zoom stock. Uh, this is the IPKP model that we discussed in detail. It's a network model. Uh, it's composed by N, N permission matrices. Uh, ten of them are forming like vectors, uh, and sixteen of them are continuous. Uh, and uh, uh, the feature of the model that uh, uh, interest, interested to me more is the fact that space time emerges dynamically from the bosonic uh, matrix degrees of freedom. Because the eigenvalues of uh, the AMU can be thought of as space time coordinates. So, this identification will allow us to study questions like the dynamical emergence of time, the dynamical emergence of space and find a mechanism that will tell us how to compactify the extra dimensions of superstring theory uh, using also the dynamics of the theory, as well as to define the time evolution that will permit us to study a uh, in this context. So these are not trivial dynamical properties of the model. First of all, time must emerge and be homogeneous and of infinite extent as we take the larger limit. And uh, the number of large dimensions of space must be free so that we have uh, obvious correspondence uh, with uh, the real world and expand in a way which is consistent with the uh, uh, cosmological model. And uh, time and space must be real, something that is not uh, uh, really uh, obvious. And uh, metric, the signature of the metric that emerges uh, must be Lorentzian. Uh, at late time. So these are the questions that I will try to address in this talk, and I will resort to numerical constraints in order to learn something about it. So lattice string theory has a long history, and uh, started in 1999 by Hoppe, Nishimura, and uh, Cecilia, uh, where they studied the model, which they simplified because it serves the fermionic degrees of freedom. But then it went on with several papers studying uh, several matrix models in four, six, and ten dimensions that are related to the IPKP model, and attempting to understand the mechanism of the dynamical compactification of the extra dimension. And uh, what is now understood is that uh, in the Euclidean model, uh, the extra dimensions are compact compactified via a mechanism of spontaneous symmetry breaking of the rotational invariance of the model. And what we also learned in this uh, journey is that the dynamics of the fermions are crucial for the realization of such a scenario. Unfortunately, there is a very strong technical obstacle, which is the fact that uh, numerical simulations are hindered by a very strong complex system problem. In uh, 2011, using a, a kind of perturbative expansion, the Gaussian expansion method, uh, this gentleman here uh, provided strong evidence that uh, the scenario is realized and uh, three different configurations with three large dimensions seem to dominate the path integral by showing that the free energy of such configuration is uh, minimal. And finally, in 2020, we were able for the first time to simulate the full model with dynamical fermions uh, from first principles and produce results that are consistent with uh, Result of this work. Yes. For the transit sphere, right? So you know if it's in the national surface or is it still there? Uh, well, we, we, we do very crude uh, uh, computations in the in the four in the four dimensional case, the four dimensional model here. We try to study and see how fuzzy. Uh, this uh, space is, and it was pretty fuzzy. Okay. Uh, it was scaling with the size of the system, but uh, I, I don't know uh, exactly. I mean, uh, I don't know what it is. 
So uh, what you see here is uh, a simulation of the model where uh, the effective fermionic action, which is complex, is entered in the model but with uh, the phase ignored, the phase quench model. And uh, even in that case, which is very close to the model that we want to simulate, we find that in the larger limit, the configurations that dominate are uh, also transmitted. And uh, this is supported also by previous studies that show that when all the fermions are quenched, that's the original uh, photon of the mirror to see the model, uh, then uh, also we don't have uh, spontaneous similarity. In the four dimensional model where the fermionic partition function is strictly positive, we also don't have F of B. And here, uh, when we, we quench the phase, also we don't have F of B. But when we include the full model, then uh, in this work, we were able to show that uh, three of uh, the dimensions of the model uh, seem to have uh, larger values in the larger limit uh, compared to the rest. And this was a pretty involved uh, computation that in order to do it, we introduced deformations to the model. First, uh, some explicit uh, rotational symmetry breaking terms so that uh, we have uh, something to teach us about the F of B as epsilon zero. And uh, because of a technical problem that I will be discussing more later, we had to introduce also these deformations to avoid the wrong convergence problem of the method that we used to do the simulation. And the model is defined first in the larger limit, then we take epsilon to zero to see if we have F of B, and then we approach as close to the aggregated model by making this parameter as small as this one. And here, of course, the paper has many figures to support this conclusion, but here is one with a valid zero equal to 0 0.7, and where we conclude that indicates this assumption. But uh, as June already remarked, in the diffusion model, we only have uh, three dimensional space, and uh, if we want to study also time, we have to go to the Lorentzian model. So the difference with the diffusion model is, of course, the same symmetry. But the action now is not uh, positive definite. And uh, this is the partition function here. We first integrate out the fermions, and that is the fermionic partition function, which is the Sophian that the function uh, is out. And uh, this is the real polynomial in A. And so the important thing is valid for the Lorentzian model. But as uh, Jules explained before, this is equivalent to the Euclidean model. And uh, in order to study uh, something that will be related to the Lorentzian model, we introduce this Lorentz variant mass term, which is a deformation controlled by this parameter gamma. And uh, we add this term to the uh, action that uh, we want to simulate. And this is the model that will be discussed in the following time. And of course, this is understood in a way where we first take the larger limit, and then we take gamma going to zero, but keeping gamma positive. So, uh, in order to make a, a space-time interpretation of the model, first we uh, use the symmetry of the model and diagonalize the time matrix. So, after the diagonalization, we have the eigenvalues alpha 1 to alpha n here, uh, we have a trace symmetry, and uh, we can always skip the eigenvalues any way we like. And the convention here is to set the trace symmetry to zero. And then we, we, we choose the rotation so that uh, these are ordered in this way. So after that, we have no freedom to rotate uh, the space and entities. And uh, the non trivial property of the system is the phase that we will be discussing later is that it has this strong narrow band diagonal structure where the elements of the matrix that are close to the diagonal are much larger than the ones that are far away. And uh, the typical uh, length of the band is characterized by a small n integer here. And uh, what we consider here, n is fixed, so uh, all those matrix elements are considered to be small. 
and uh, this n by n matrix will correspond to the coordinates of space. So if we look at the diagonalized A0 matrix, here it is diagonal, we take the corresponding eigenvalues of uh, A0, we average them out and we get this alpha bar here. And the way that I will be defining time in the next is the following. I consider the differences of uh, subsequent alpha bars to give us the delta t. And as we will see, this delta t can be either a real number or a complex number. So in order to define the sense of time, uh, these delta t's are taken here and added with an absolute value to uh, compute the time that corresponds to this uh, space. Uh, for uh, technical reasons, uh, Nishimura and Tuchinga suggested to make a change of variables, and instead of considering the eigenvalues of alpha zero, is to consider the, those auxiliary uh, variable stuff, tau. Uh, so uh, the reason for introducing this change of variables is because now the taus take uh, all, all real values from minus infinity to plus infinity. And uh, the way the definition is made, it makes the ordering of the eigenvalues always correct, no matter what the values of tau are. So this is important if we want later to use the, comp the complex number method where we have to complexify the degree of freedom that we will be computing uh, with the equation. There is, a, there is a shift symmetry. I can shift them whenever I want. Whenever I want. So I, I chose alpha 1 to be 0. If that's the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, in the original papers by Yoon uh, and Kim, and that's what we were doing. Always we were making the same thing. We're making. Um, Later, I will also show the time to do it. I will use this question previously. After making this change of variables, the model that I will simulate is this one. I will integrate over the taus and the spatial uh, matrices here. I have to add those terms because uh, I took symmetry and uh, made change of variables here. Uh, but uh, the technical problem that exists with this is that there, there are these eyes. And these eyes induce in this uh, model a very strong complex action problem that we have to deal with uh, the available methods in the market to uh, overcome as much as uh, we can. So uh, the problem here doesn't contribute very much to the problem, but. So uh, the complex number ring met method is, is the following. It's a system of uh, stochastic differential equations where we put here uh, stochastic variables that are uh, random variables that have a Gaussian distribution. And it is possible to choose them uh, real information here. There is a freedom in that, but uh, for technical reasons it is easier to make uh, this choice. And uh, the derivatives of the action here are called the drift term. And uh, uh, as we make uh, the time evolution in this fictitious time, the Langevin time, uh, then those terms antagonize each other. And the system finds itself in uh, some equilibrium. Uh, the fact that the action is complex uh, makes the evolution consistent only if we complexify the value. So uh, the towns that are original real are becoming uh, complex numbers, and the matrices, the special matrices here, which are Hermitian, we also obtain an anti Hermitian part and a general uh, n by n uh, complex matrix. So uh, as I said uh, before, uh, when uh, the system comes into equilibrium, uh, 
uh, we can calculate and show that the expectation values calculated in, uh, in the time direction of the successive waves in time are equal to the expectation values of the original model. And this is a non-trivial uh, result that also uh, has its uh, small uh, part. No, 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 the original model is not changed. So when I put expectation value here, this is expectation value with respect to this. So now this... Well, you, you have to compute... You have to compute with the probability distribution of, uh, of the time evolution here. And so that this probability distribution will give you a result such that the numerical coverage will be equal to this. Okay. 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 <laughs> uh, now, it is well known that this method is plagued by several problems. Uh, we have this wrong convergence problem that was studied for many years, and for many years from the original suggestion, the method was not used because of that. And uh, the, this problem was, there was a lot of progress uh, uh, in the in the 2000s, studying all this, culminating with uh, these authors offering us a very simple criterion that uh, will help us uh, have sufficient, when this criterion is satisfied, uh, this is sufficient to, to believe that uh, this model will not give us wrong answers because, for example, uh, the flow can uh, go very deep in the imaginary or in the anti-Hermitian direction. Uh, or because another problem that we will be discussing uh, soon, uh, the singular drift problem. I think the microphone doesn't like me. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what I will do. So uh, the idea is to make this very simple computation. This is a, a specific norm for the drift terms defined uh, very easily from this formula here. And uh, the criterion is to perform a simulation, compute uh, the probability distribution of uh, uh, this norm here. And if this is asymptotically uh, going to zero faster than exponential, then you're guaranteed that you will not have those problems. And here I'm showing you some cartoons from our simulations where these simulations are very good. We have a Gaussian distribution of this uh, random variable. This is failing because it goes slower. I mean, this is a log-log, uh, sorry, uh, a log, uh, not log, uh, plot here. Uh, hmm? This is just normalization. It's just counting the number of terms so that it is of order one as you change n. It, it, it is not important because all you care is whether this goes uh, exponentially or not. So, I mean, this is for comparing a different end, but it, it's it's not important. I mean, for the criteria the, for the criterion, the normalization is irrelevant. So the other problem that arises here is the fact that uh, the effective partition function enters with this term in the uh, in the effective action, which involves this trace that has the inverse of uh, the matrix M appearing here. 
And uh, uh, when the eigenvalues of these metrics accumulate near the origin, then we are in trouble. Uh, and uh, these eigenvalues don't have to be exactly zero to have a problem. Uh, when they get very small absolute values, that could lead to numerical instabilities. So we really need to go uh, to, to make them in a way to, to stand a minimum distance from the origin to have uh, uh, correct results. So uh, Ito Nishimura proposed uh, in the context of a different model that they study to uh, shift those eigenvalues away from the origin by adding this uh, quadratic in the fermions term. I mean, it was not exactly that in their model, but uh, in spirit it is the same. And this deformation here is controlled by this parameter MF. Of course, this takes us away from the original model. And uh, in order to study the IKKT, we have eventually to send this parameter to zero. Notice also that if this term becomes very large, then it effectively freezes the, fer the fermionic fluctuations and we obtain uh, uh, the fermion quenched model or uh, AKA the bosonic model, the model without fermions. So here is also a cartoon of the effect of this term. I will uh, show that figure later to, for more details. But you see that its effect is to take uh, the eigenvalues of the matrix M and shift them to the right from the origin. Uh, in order to study the complex Langevin, with the complex Langevin method, the model, we have to discretize the stochastic equations, and this can be done in many ways. We have done it in uh, first order, and also applied the second order runge kuta And uh, of course, uh, there is a time step here that uh, one has to be careful in the end and send it to zero to make sure that there are no discretization errors. Uh, the fermionic drift is uh, computed uh, in, in a way that is known very well from uh, uh, lattice QCD for many, several decades. And uh, instead of, do, of computing this trace directly, which is time costly, uh, we introduce a Gaussian noise normalized uh, as here. And uh, we compute this, uh, uh, this uh, scalar here, uh, as it is, and uh, average over chi will give us an estimator of the trace. And uh, therefore, the, the heart of our computation becomes computing this uh, product here, which is the inverse of m acting on a n square long vector. And for that, we can use the conjugate gradient method. Of course, we have to be careful because uh, for uh, the conjugate gradient method to be uh, efficient, uh, we have to have a positive definite matri ma uh, matrix, but we compute the solution by using M dagger M instead of M. That's not a problem. Finally, we can save a lot of CPU time by realizing that the matrix M is sparse, and uh, the, instead of computing the matrix vector products directly, we use this formula here, which is n cube in uh, CPU time, and that is the dominant contribution in the simulation. Furthermore, we find that in uh, most cases, we have to introduce the so-called stabilization parameter used by Atanasio and Jagger in the context of lattice QCD. Uh, what we do is we introduce this parameter eta, which we keep very small, and that uh, makes this the spatial matrix matrices a little bit more Hermitian than they are. Of course, when eta goes to one, this is completely Hermitianizing the matrix. When eta is zero, nothing happens. And we typically keep it uh, at this uh, uh, range of values. So let me show you some results. These are the distributions of uh, the alphas, the uh, eigenvalues of A0, for uh, uh, an interesting set of parameters. We have done lots of simulations, but uh, for what I'm going to discuss today, these are the relevant ones. So this is, a, this, this is about 64 by 64 matrices. MF is not so small. It's equal to 10. And uh, gamma here is changing. The, uh, the parameter controlling the uh, Lorentz invariant master. <clears throat> and what you see here 
is that the distribution is close to the real axis. It's not on the real axis, so they're not real. Uh, they're kind of more complex near the origin, but then at later times, they tend to be parallel to the real axis. So if we consider the time to be the difference between the eigenvalues, we interpret this as having here real time and at early times to have complex time. So it kind of uh, seems like we have a change of, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's an indication that we, we may have a change of uh, uh, the signature of the metric from being Euclidean to Lorentzian. Of course, this is not exactly Euclidean. Euclidean is this line here to compare with. But anyway, we have MF large, so we're not really simulating the true model yet. Uh, we confirm that the model has uh, a very narrow band structure when we find it in this uh, phase. So the space-time interpretation is uh, holding. And we also check whether space is also real, which is also not uh, trivial. So the, pa the parameter that we measure to decide whether space is real or not is this uh, angle here, th theta space, which is the phase of trace A squared. And uh, uh, if this is zero, that means this, that this is zero and we conclude that space is zero. Now this line here, corresponds according to what uh, Jun said before to the angle that uh, gives us the Euclidean model. So what we see here is that we start with theta s, which is not zero clearly, but not as big as the Euclidean model. This also shows from the slope here that we're not on the Euclidean model yet. And as we move to later times, it dies out uh, to zero. So at late times, it seems that we have real time and real space. And another feature when we find the system in this phase is that one of the dimensions is large and it is expanding exponentially with this time. So here you see I center the time at zero <laughs> as, you, as you want it. So what we compute here, we call this the moment of inertia tensor because it computes the distribution of the eigenvalues of uh, uh, this matrix here. First we hermitianize the the matrices, then we diagonalize them, we order them, and then take the expectation value. And uh, <clears throat> this gives us this result. Nine of them remain small, and one of them starts from being small, and then increasing with a law that is fitted here to an exponential quite well. So this is for MF equal to 10, and uh, uh, you see here the difference between uh, smaller gamma and slightly larger gamma, we have some signal that uh, the expansion is, uh, is, is uh, more prominent. Now we stay uh, at the same gamma and uh, decrease MF. We were able to go up to MF equal to five. And uh, we see that by decreasing MF, we have uh, maybe some slight uh, stronger expansion than uh, when MF is equal to 10. Now, I have to stress, though, that we have seen this behavior also in the bosonic model, which you can think that it corresponds to MF equal infinity. So uh, we think that this behavior is, uh, uh, the model is still in the quote, quote, bosonic phase, uh, at least for the uh, parameters that we have uh, computed. But uh, it seems so far technically hard to reduce MF to smaller values. And uh, for the values that we have simulated so far, the system remains in this uh, bosonic phase. The bosonic phase is characterized by a strong attraction of the eigenvalues. And the effect of the fermions is to make this attraction weaker. As the number of the bosonic matrices is increased, also, the attractive force between the eigenvalues is also expected to increase. We also make uh, another remark, which is very important, is that the IKK tip fafia, not the deformed one, no, uh, is zero when only two of the bosonic matrices are non-zero. So it seems 
that what the one dimensional expansion that we have, uh, I have shown you before must be strongly suppressed when the effect of the Fafian will kick in. Furthermore, let's, uh, this is a speculation. Uh, it seems that when we have expansion, we have an exponential expansion in time. So uh, space will, I mean, the expanding directions will be quite big if we compare them to the extent of time for, for given n. So uh, if uh, two-dimensional configurations are suppressed, then uh, three-dimension comes next. And uh, since uh, time will not be one of them, we may have and obtain a three-dimensional expanding universe. So in order to avoid the problem of not being, being able to reduce MF further and uh, try to enhance the effect of the Fafian, we have performed some simulations that favor lower dimensional configurations, which I will call D tilde, which is a number smaller than nine. Okay, nine are the spatial dimensions of the original model. Now we'll make simulations of configurations that are mostly uh, D tilde dimensional. And as D tilde is increased and MF decreased, we hope to see a transition from the one dimensional behavior to the three dimensional one. Now the way we did the suppression was in two ways. First, uh, one can uh, uh, set the remaining dimensions equal to zero at each step. Or if we want to see uh, in a continuous way the effect of this uh, suppression, we can introduce a parameter lambda in this uh, Gaussian term. And uh, uh, as this becomes very large, then uh, D, D tilde configurations will be enhanced and uh, higher dimensional configurations will be suppressed. And we hope that with this uh, uh, cooking that we're doing here, the bias will be small, expecting a low dimensional universe to emerge. So let me show you first uh, how, how this can improve the situation with MF. And uh, of course, this is a small matrix here, n equal 22, so that we can compute uh, the eigenvalues of the fermionic matrix M. So you see here for MF equal to two, this is the distribution of the eigenvalues. And as we increase lambda, that means we, we suppress, uh, we keep, sorry, five, five dimensions here, large, and the other four are suppressed. So as the other four become smaller and smaller, you see that the distribution becomes narrower and narrower close to the real axis. And that gives us hope that we can decrease MF further. And indeed, if, if we simulate MF equal to 0 0.5, then you see that uh, this distribution is still narrow and we can avoid the origin. So let me stick now to MF equal to two and uh, uh, present you some results for N equal to 96. Uh, so what I will show you now is that uh, as we vary the parameter gamma that controls the uh, strength of the Gaussian uh, of the quadratic uh, term, uh, as we lower the value of gamma, uh, we will see a transition from the one dimensional expansion to a D tilde dimensional expansion. Of course, when gamma goes to zero for finite n, we go back to the Euclidean model. So, I mean, there is a gamma that if we lower it further, we just obtain Euclidean model. So I'm not taking gamma very small, I keep it uh, to the range where I can obtain real time and real space. So here you see that for gamma equal two, I have this uh, one dimensional expansion here. There's also some suppression here, which is interesting to see what it is. Uh, that now is increasing gamma. And you see qualitatively, uh, the behavior is similar, although the range of time has been suppressed. This has become a little bit more complex. And then at gamma equal six, we lose the one dimensional expansion and we have an SOD tilde symmetric uh, universe. Of course, the other dimensions are artificially kept to zero. We are at lambda equal infinity here. Okay, so this might correspond to the uh, symmetric phase uh, of the model. Here are also some results. 
for uh, MF equal to 4, which are, are qualitatively similar. At gamma equal 2, we have uh, one-dimensional expanding universe, real time, real space. And then uh, when gamma is increased to 4, we have still expanding real time and real space universe, but which is SOD tilde symmetric. So let me summarize. So what we uh, discussed today is that the Lorentzian IKKT model can be defined by contour deformation from the Euclidean model, as June described. Then the two models are equivalent, and the emergent space-time is complex, Euclidean and three-dimensional. We introduce the Lorentz invariance mass term using a positive parameter gamma, and we define the model in the limit n goes to infinity, large n limit, and then gamma to zero. We simulated the IKKT model using the complex Langevin method to avoid the complex action problem. And in order to avoid the singular drift, drift problem, we introduced a fermionic deformation here, controlled by a parameter MF, which should be taken uh, in the end to zero. So we have performed simulations for MF larger than or equal to five, and we obtain one-dimensional exponential expanding space. Time is emerging dynamical. It is homogeneous, complex at small times, becoming real at large times, and space is also real at late times. The signature of space-time is changing, possibly from being Euclidean at small times to being Minkowskian at later times. In order to simulate the model for smaller MF, and enhance the effect of the Fafian, we simulated the model with a constraint that uh, 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 suppresses uh, the dimensions larger than d in space. And we found the transition from the one-dimensional <coughs> expand, uh, expanding behavior to a d-tilde expanding behavior. Since the Fafian is zero for two-dimensional configuration, the one-dimensional expansion is expected to be strongly suppressed in the IKKT model. And we hope that, that by further reducing MF, we can obtain uh, a three-dimensional expanding universe. Thank you. Yes. In the end, we will need, as MF goes to zero, the model is supersymmetric. Uh, the model that we simulate, of course, I, I, I also said it is still in the bosonic phase. So it is dominated. Uh, so the effect of, of the supersymmetry is not uh, seen yet. So for that, uh, that is future work that we are trying hard to do. But uh, uh, this is the hope. <laughs> yeah. What is the cost of that? Yes, in fact, they have been proposed by Anos and others, and we have tried them ourselves, but uh, that uh, didn't help us. So they, I mean, uh, we, we studied them for a couple of months, but uh, we found that for what we're doing so far, uh, we don't see any improvement. In a, in a numerical sense. I mean, if, if you write down a term that is keeping supersymmetry on the lattice, you do that because you hope that uh, finite size effects uh, will be smaller. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can write anything you, you want that uh, in the continuum limit will be supersymmetric. So when, we, when you do a lattice discretization, you decide to keep some of the symmetries because you hope that uh, that will make the finite, the discretization effects uh, 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 less strong. So when I say that we tried it and uh, we didn't see any improvement is that uh, for the matrix sizes that we saw, we didn't see anything better coming out. Th 
Yeah. Sorry, Fafi and Faze? Uh, you mean the complex phase? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. No, no. We're not quenching anything, but, uh, okay, the, the, the Fafian is the main reason for the complex action problem in the Euclidean model. Okay. In the Lorentzian model, it is real. You still have the possibility of having sign problem, but uh, uh, Yoon uh, has done long time ago when they were making their first papers, many experiments, and uh, they have uh, tried many configurations and say most of the time the Fafian is positive. That's the best I can say. No, we use the CLM, we don't care. Yeah, so, we, I mean, if we were doing uh, reweighting, for example, then we would care. Or for example, Masanori, in his uh, papers, he, 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 I think he quenches the face uh, because the sign problem is small. The, I think we had measured it in the original paper also that you take the expectation value of into the I gamma and see how close to unity it is. And if it is not very far from unity, then the complex action problem is small. But in, in our case, first of all, we don't care because we use the CLM, but also the main source of the complex action problem in this model is the I in front of the action. 